Martha Fraser here and I'm very excited about this webinar tonight and thanks a million to everyone for joining me. So I'd just like to check that um, that people can hear me so if there's a little question box there if you can just type in that that you can hear me okay and you can see the screen as well um, I'd love to hear from you. So there's a lot of people online tonight and um, I'm very excited there's people from all over the world, so it's very excited that um, that you have joined me tonight. So if somebody could just type in the area there, that would be great. Okay, so I'm just going to start, and I think we'll have some more people joining us. We've got a couple of hundred all on already, which is it's quite exciting uh, what you can do with technology these days. So. You're very, very welcome to, uh, this is actually my first webinar that I've done and I'm very excited about it because you're able to reach people around the world that you wouldn't have access to and you couldn't help. So this webinar is about teaching you how to uh, look and feel fabulous. Um, now it's geared at people who are approaching 40 but to be honest, this is for anyone really um, who's facing a milestone in their life or who needs time to reflect and see how you're doing. So. The next hour is completely yours, okay? So I hope that you have um I hope that you have the children uh oh, I was going to say locked away, but <laughs> hopefully someone's babysitting them or they're in bed and that you can uh take this hour for yourself because women are often given their time to work and their lives to their family and this hour is all about you. So I want to make sure that you have a pen and paper because during this hour we're going to be doing a little bit of work and uh, all work about you so something that you'll enjoy. So if you have a pen and paper get that handy now. So if you physically can um, I'd like you to stand up and I'm going to do this now okay and I'd like you to take a step. Just one step okay and you're probably laughing to yourself going, what the hell is she doing? But trust me, um, it, it's, uh, it's, it's, meta it's a metaphor, you know. So if you've stood up and if you've taken that step, I'd like to congratulate you because that is the first step in the direction of your health and the new life that you want to create. Because if you came on this webinar, then there's obviously something that you'd like to change in your life. And sometimes taking a physical step like that even as small as doing something like that is actually a sense of achievement. It's going, yes, I've taken a step. And even coming on this webinar is taking a step because you want to know more, you want to change yourself, and you want to know how you can better yourself and, and get the life that you want, you know, because these days, you know, we're all so busy, we're all so stressed. And we have to remember that it's, it's in doing the small things every day that will actually create the life that we want. So it's taking time out to breathe, it's taking time out to um, just assess where you are. So this webinar is about looking and feeling fabulous at 40. And 40 is just a number. And no matter what age you are, it's just a number. But 40 or 50, you know, 30, all those decade numbers, it's a great milestone to acknowledge that and use it as an excuse, you know, because women are we're our own worst enemies for not taking time out for ourselves. But when you reach a milestone like 40 or 50, you kind of go, okay, you know, you can tell everyone, you know, this is my 40th. I'm doing X, Y, and Z for myself this year because I deserve it. And you, everybody in my life knows that I need a break and I deserve some self-love for myself. So be your version of fabulous. So, you know, I'm no Sandra Bullock. I'm no Jennifer Aniston. And I can't be, and nor can you be. You know, we can only be the best that we can be. And sometimes we forget that, you know, we're, we're trying to change ourselves. And, you know, we expect that we're going to look um, like, I don't know, a movie star. But we won't look like them, but we will look fabulous when we put the time and attention into ourselves. You know, so just keep that in mind, that you can just be the best version of you. Okay, so get your pen ready and get your paper ready. So we're going to do our first little task. So this is all about you tonight. So I want you to list 10 things that you really like about yourself. I know, that's, 
maybe you didn't expect to be doing a little bit of work, but um, this is going to be interesting. So it's worth, you know, just jotting down 10 things that you really like about yourself. It could be uh, something about your body. It could be something about your work. It could be something about just something about your life that you really like. And the quote here on this uh, page is comparison is a thief of joy. So um, in one of my old jobs, one of the managers used to say, um, you know, don't look at your dinner table or don't look at the dinner of the guy next to you. Just look at your dinner. Um, and it was a great it was a great quote that always stuck with me. You know, um, if we're always looking around us at other people, we don't get the energy or the time to focus on what we really want. So knowing what we have and appreciating um, some things that we like about ourselves is a great stepping stone. You know, it's like the foundation of a house. Once you have that foundation, you can build on that and you, and you could create, you know, the person that you want to be. So I hope you've listed 10 things that you like um, that you like about yourself. So whatever they are, again, it could be anything. It could be a personality trait that you're very honest, that you're very funny. It could be that you have nice legs. It could be that you have nice eyes, you know, whatever it is. So who am I? So this is a quick kind of vision board and um, yeah, I'm trying to get used to seeing my picture up on um, on different things and uh, I guess it, that, you know, that's um, that's something we all have to get used to. So anyway, this is me. Um, my vision is basically changing the world by changing lives one at a time. And you can see up there I've got two little girls. I love eating healthy. For me, my health journey started many years ago and it brought me to study nutrition and I now work as a nutritional therapist. Um, I love cooking. I love food. I love trying to make healthy food. And you can see there the bottom right hand corner photo, um, the journal with my clients. I love working with people and I love helping them to become the best that they can be. I recently spoke at the Nutritional Therapist of Ireland's AGM and you can see there my laptop and all my um, my equipment that's, that's at home actually and you know I love working hard and I don't mind working hard because I love what I do and you can see my juice there in my books and I love to study and you know learning never stops and for you what you're going to learn tonight about your goals you know it, it, goals change every year you know and you will change every year so that's just a little snapshot about myself and who I am. It's nice to know who you're talking to, I guess. And what we're going to cover tonight in this talk, we're going to cover what you really want. And we're going to figure out what's holding you back, the real reason why you haven't achieved it. And we're going to talk about creating a plan for you. And I will go through a 10-step plan for achieving what's really important to you. So what do you really want out of your life? Um, we often don't take time to figure these things out, and nor do we have time to even ask ourselves that, not to mind breathe, you know. And, um, you know, it gets to the stage where you've donated your life to your career or your family, and nobody's asking you, do you need anything, you know. So, ladies, it is time, you know, the time has arrived to take some time out for yourself and assess where you are in your life. And uh, this quote is from a friend of mine, Jill Carl. She owns a restaurant here in Galway. And this is up on her wall. And it's 2014 is your year. Chase your dreams. And, you know, it's true. Like, if you want something, you have to go after it yourself. No one else is going to do it for you. And if you don't, then you will go to the grave with that goal. And you will have never achieved it if you haven't tried. So, again, get your pen ready. We're on to step number two. So. Does your life look like this or do you look like this? Do you feel stressed? Are you sick and tired of your routine? Um, is your diet not helping you? Are you not sleeping? Is your work stressing you out? Are you anxious? Do you get sleep? And, you know, is money possibly an issue for you as well? And just basically life can just get completely on top of you. So it's time to breathe. And this is really important in our daily life. So what we're going to do is I want you to kind of visualize your success. And this is something I do with a lot of my clients is creating a vision board. Uh, some clients create personal vision boards and other clients create uh, professional, you know, for work vision boards. So I would write this down as an action for you to do after this talk. Um, just to jot down some words that are really important to you. You know, what you want to achieve in 2014. 
you know, what's important to you in, in various different parts of your life. So you can make these uh, vision boards with magazines, newspapers. I think there's even an online tool. Actually, I have the link for an online tool. And if you want, if you want that link for the online tool, just email me, martha at marthafraser.com. I'll put up that email later on in, in the webinar. So having this vision board will keep you focused on what you really want. You know, put down that you want to change your job, you want to change your car, whatever is really important to you. And the, one of the main things is to keep it uh, in a very close proximity to, you day, to your life. So if you're brushing your teeth, perhaps uh, put it up on the wall in the bathroom and create a couple of copies, put one up in the fridge. Um, and one thing that I did actually was I took a photo of mine and uh, I put it as my screensaver on my phone. So I'm constantly reminded of what I want for 2014. So too many of us are not living our dreams because we're living our fears. And we may not think about that often, but we often, uh, you know, decide not to do something because, oh, I'm too scared, you know, I just don't want to do it. And for example, this webinar, I have to say, I was quite nervous about doing it because it's my first one and because I'm speaking to, speaking to people globally around the world and there are a lot of people on this webinar and I actually got a small head cold this week and forgive me if, if you can hear it, but I was very tempted to cancel, to reschedule and I said, okay, this this head cold is just, you know, it's a speed bump, it's a challenge, it's an obstacle. I can either go through it or I can sit at home, cancel the webinar and go home and mind myself. But I knew that if I cancelled, it would have prevented me. And in a way, it was holding on to my fears. So here I am, I'm doing the webinar. And sometimes with your fears, you just have to go do it. With uh, that talk that I did last week with uh, my peers, you know, at our AGM, I decided to do it and then I figured it out later and sometimes you have to do that in life, just accept the challenge that you've set yourself and just go for it and decide how to figure it out later, you know. So I want you in your whatever pen and paper that you have there, I want you to create two columns. One is for your personal life and the other one is for your work. So what do you really want, you know, in your personal life? Do you want to change your image? Sorry, excuse me, my head cold. Do you want to change your fitness levels? Do you want to change your work? Um, could you work maybe a little bit better or would you like to work part-time? And sometimes, like a couple of clients that I've spoken to, they want a dream job and then they kind of go, well, I couldn't have that. But they just haven't thought about a way to figure out how to get it or, you know, maybe they could talk to somebody that could help them get that. So I just want you to write down, just now while we're going through this, is there anything in your personal life that you really want and anything in your work life that you really want? So uh, this is just what I was speaking about earlier on. When asked to do something great but you don't know how, don't think about the how. Say yes and figure it out later. So when you're writing down your goals, I want you to think about what you really want. Don't think about what you can do or what you feel you're capable of doing. Just write down what you what you really want. Even if you think you can't do it right now, um, there's a saying that, uh, you know, the goals of our future can be answered by the person you are now because you haven't, you haven't got the know-how to do it. But once you commit to what you want to do, you'll figure it out. And that's, that's the journey, you know. So this is a big one. So in one year from now, what, what do you want? With work, what would you really love to do? Is there something, is there a different job you'd love to do? Is there something in your current job that you'd love to change? Um, you know, how would you like to change your work? So I hope you're jotting down some stuff there with that. And if anyone can type, that would be brilliant. I see some people are putting in some questions here. Thanks very much. That's brilliant. Um, yeah, so just get typing there, uh, sorry, get writing about what, what would you really like to do. And one, um, one tool that a friend of mine, Greg Muller, uses, it's called, I hope Greg, I get this right, it's called the Mandela. So you take uh, an A4 refill pad or a notepad, some kind of notepad, 
and you buy yourself uh, lots of coloring pencils and on a daily basis this is a really great task to do you just start writing you can draw you can write words uh, and basically whatever is in your subconscious will come out and it's amazing it's a really good uh, task so I really advise you to do it and you will actually what you really want will come out because you're not thinking about it it just flows out of you so with your body um, is your body a reflection of your fears Whew, so that's a big one really okay um, you know we all go through stress and in the past couple of years um, you know there's a recession and my husband works in construction so I know all about it and you know sometimes we can resort to comfort food we can you know get off track with our work or with our fitness we're so busy and sometimes our body I heard a quote one saying that you know your your body is the padding between you and the world and it's very interesting actually you know because sometimes we choose to hide behind our body because you know we don't want the world to see us we don't want to be exposed so you know jot down now what what it is that you don't like about your body what it is you'd like to change and is there a fear behind behind that like often like I, I, I tell clients that you know weight or anything physical it's, it's only a symptom you know it's a symptom of perhaps emotional management that you just haven't got to grips with you know because we're not taught emotional management and it's only when we're emotionally connected to ourselves a hundred percent and when we find joy in our life every day and that's another thing that I tell clients to do is to do one great thing a day so whether it's uh, you know paint your nails or go swimming you know do something make a list of things that, uh, that actually bring you joy so that's a great thing to have up on your bed locker or in your kitchen the list of things that you love to do and pick one thing a day and if you put that joy back in your life you, you know you're, you're not going to comfort eat as much you're not going to uh, you know you're not going to uh, go resort to food for the joy I was in a petrol station there recently on a Friday night and there was a queue of people and they had all these bags of sweets and I know um, if you're sitting there and you're laughing then um, you might be able to resonate with this and I just stood there and I thought you know what I said you know they're, they're all packets of joy and what what are they doing you know you know go out and do something and, and don't get me wrong it's great to have a treat believe me I, I love my chocolate as well but you know go and do something that brings you joy don't resort to food for for the answer you know so emotional management are you on the hamster wheel of emotions so one task for you to do now is maybe write down some stuff that you know is on your radar but you haven't really dealt with it and learning to connect with your emotions and actually going and facing them actually and going right I need to deal with this I have to sort out you know whatever it is this stuff that's going on with work I have to sort out this stuff that's going on with my family you know you know make a phone call arrange to meet with, meet with someone talk it over or you know seek professional help talk to a counsellor or, or just talk to a friend you know and even by just writing it out what we're doing now will actually sort out uh, get that emotion out of you and even just list it down on paper that okay this is something that I need to address and often by just even saying it out loud it actually brings it to the forefront and it helps resolve some of the issues so how's your energy what kind of energy would you like to have and show the world and when I say about energy and showing the world we forget every day that we're present in the world and our energy actually reflects our status of where we are in our life when our energy is poor you know we kind of sometimes you can feel your posture is uh, sinking down you're going in under your shoulders and you're just you're you know you're getting on with life and you're just you're on that hamster wheel and you're just pottering away whereas when you're eating a healthy diet when you're getting exercise when you're in the life that you really want to be sorry excuse me when you're in the life that you really want to be your energy is radiating 
and when you radiate, you know, people see it, you know, other people see it and they go, wow, I want, you know, I, I want to have whatever she's having, you know. So I want you to rate your energy now on a scale of 1 to 10. So 1 being low and 10 being high, how is your energy? And when you think about your energy on a daily basis, you know, is it regularly low? And is there something that you could do about it? And obviously I work as a nutritional therapist, so I know plenty of things that I could do to help you with that. So, so yeah, and not only your energy, actually, you know, think about your family as well, because as women, we are the, um, you know, I guess we're the, the hostess of the family and our energy is reflected within our family and the food that we eat and the food our family eats, you know, so, so we're paving the way for your family, you know, so it's up to us to, to make sure that we're giving them uh, what they need to, to get on with life and to, you know, to have good energy themselves. So with work, um, just again, just to make maybe make a couple of of notes of what you'd really love to do. We kind of talked about this one already and how you'd like to change uh, where you are right now. And overall, let's say your health, let's say we talked about energy, we talked about diet, but overall if you have any um, conditions that you're that you're aware of or maybe even not aware of, if you've got some symptoms, if you've got some digestion issues, some bloating, some constipation, some wind, and especially for ladies, um, you know, any digestion issues can be very embarrassing and it's often we don't talk about it, you know, and uh, a couple of my friends that I trained with, you know, they're aware of, I always talk about stool movements, you know, and they're probably laughing now, a couple of them are on this call, and uh, my saying is, poo is not taboo, okay, so what I want you to, to start doing after this call um, and from every day after this is to start looking when you do a stool movement. Just have a quick glance, see what it's like. I have a stool chart that, uh, it's a brilliant chart. It allows you to compare your stool to what it should be and it gives you some indications of where your health is. So if you want that chart, just send me an email. Again, it's martha at marthafraser.com and I'll, I'll send that to you. And it gives you a good assessment of where you are. So Again, just write down now, where is your health? Where would you like it to be? And if there's anything that you need to address, just make note of that. So with your diet, our diet basically is an opportunity every day to nourish your body. And it, you know, we sometimes forget that we eat just to fill the gap. We, we just put in whatever's handy just to get us by, to get us on to the next stop. And we forget about that basically we are a machine and on the inside we run on chemicals and compounds, natural chemicals by the way, and uh, it's up to our bodies to uh, function correctly but it's up to us to give our body the, the nourishment that, it's, that it needs to do that. So maybe write down now what is it that you don't like in your diet, what is it that you need to address and how does your diet make you feel at the moment, just write one word. Does it make you feel crappy? Does it make you feel low in energy? Whatever whatever that is. So we talked about this. So it's up to you to give your family the gift of health. And unfortunately, you know, sometimes there's some women out there and their men are brilliant. And I, I you know, I applaud them. Uh, unfortunately, my husband is somebody who is strange to the kitchen. It's all up to me. So, you know, that's a fairly big task that we have to do. But to do that, it's like being, being on the airplane, you know, when they, they say, you know, take the oxygen mask first for yourself and then give it to your child. You have to look after yourself first. If you don't look after yourself, you're not going to be able to look after your family. So this is your time to make you number one. And again, let's say your fitness. So how fit are you on a scale of one to ten? And be honest, okay, you've got to take the the dose of truth serum. Try and be as honest as you can. So we often forget that we're living a life that we actually choose. Uh, I worked with a guy once and he, you know, he said to me, oh God, you know, I hate this job. And I said to him, you know, you don't have to be here. You can leave. You can change your jobs. You know, it's not prison. And life is the same. Sometimes, you know, we trap ourselves into this prison that we've created for ourselves. But really, 
you know, our choices every day, we actually physically make them. You know, I love this quote, then one day she decided to design a life she loved. You've got the, you've got every right to a beautiful life. So whatever your life is that you, you know, you have in your mind, you know, whether it's, for me, I love, you know, a life where I juice every day and I do yoga every day. Now, I try my best, I don't get it every day, but, you know, it's up to me to make those choices every day. So whatever your life is, you, you have to kind of write it down on paper like, like that, that you're designing something and just say, right, if I do a bit of this every day, my life is going to be better. So again, get your pen ready. So we are our own problem and we are our own, our own solution. Now, obviously, there's people like me and that can help you and guide you along the way. But at the end of the day, you have to do it yourself. Uh, many years ago, I hurt my back, and I went to numerous therapists. I went to physiotherapists. I went to an array of people, and it took me a while to figure it out that, you know, no matter who I went to, they don't have a magic technique. They don't have a magic pill that they can give me. That at the end of the day, I had to go home. I had to lie on my back. I had to do the exercises to get my muscles back working, and it was up to me. And that's a fairly big thing to swallow. And I, it's a great lesson that I've, that I've always remembered. So even with the help of someone like me, when I work with my clients, you know, they have to put in the work too. So that's really important to remember. So now, how, why have you not achieved these goals already? So at this stage, okay, this is all about getting to 40. And, you know, you kind of think, wow, you know, I've been on this planet 40 years, if not more. And you have to think about why haven't I achieved these goals? Well, probably because you haven't put the focus on them. You know, if you put your focus on learning to drive, you're going to learn to drive. If you put your focus on getting dressed in the morning, you're going to get dressed in the morning. If you put your focus on changing, you are going to change. Okay, so that's that's fairly substantial, you know. It's just a matter of aligning your focus with what you really, really, really want. So don't let the fear of what could happen make nothing happen. And this is a really good quote because sometimes we kind of think, yeah, 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 you know, I really, really want this. And then you build it up into something massive and, and it's up on that pedestal. Your goal is up on that pedestal and you kind of go, how am I going to achieve that? Okay, so whether that's losing half a stone, whether it's losing two stone, whether it's changing your job or just getting fit, it's it's making, first of all, creating the goal and then making out a plan to actually get there. So life shrinks or expands in proportion to one's courage. And this is so true. If you if you visualize that goal up on that pedestal and if you say, oh gosh, you know, I just don't have the courage to go and do that, your life is going to shrink. It's not going to be the abundant life that you possibly could have. Whereas if you stretch your hand out and actually close your eyes and visually stretch your hand out to that goal and touch it, you know, whether it is that new job, whether it is that fabulous tight bum and that flat abs that you always want to, you know, visualize it and say, right, I am going to do this. I can see it. I, I know exactly what I want and I am going to achieve it. So isn't that really substantial, actually visualizing that goal that you want? And actually even physically putting your hand out to it is like that, what we did at the start of the webinar, physically standing up and taking a step. It's actually going, yes, it's, it's telling your body you're going in the direction of that goal. So we often use excuses, um, and unfortunately excuses are for people who don't want it bad enough. You know, if at the end of this, this call you kind of realize, yes, you know, I have a couple of goals, but, oh, gosh, you know, I'm just too busy, then you don't want it bad enough. If there are goals on your list that you come up with excuses for, they shouldn't be on your list. If there's something on your list that you really want and you have no excuse, then that is the one thing that you really want. When you're doing your vision board, when I first did my first vision board, you know, I put on loads of things, and then I realized... If I want to achieve one or two of these things, I don't have time to focus on loads of things. So really, you have to just focus in on one or two things. 
and put your energy into that. And if you risk nothing, you get nothing, you know. So unfortunately, if you think, oh gosh, you know, uh, you know, going going for that uh, job will, you know, take a lot of time, and you know, I'd be embarrassed if people think think that you know I could go for such a big management job or something like that, or you know, I'd love to run a marathon, but gosh, you don't have to train every day, and you know, I, I'm so unfit at the moment. How the hell is that going to happen? You know, if you don't risk it you won't achieve it. And it's as simple as that, you know, you can either sit on the couch or you can get up and do something. So again, get your pens ready, ladies. So I want you to visualize now, okay, in one year from now, how would you like your life to be different? Okay, so close your eyes. I hope you're closing your eyes. And uh, I'm delighted to see that there's people all around the world, so it's very exciting. So all the women around the world closing their eyes right now and visualizing what they want in one in a year from now. So earlier on we wrote down some words of what you want to. So I want you to just close your eyes and to visualize what your body is going to look like, what your um, fitness is going to be like. You know, even visualize what clothes are you wearing and visualize the smile on your face, you know, how how are you feeling? And can you see, can you feel that energy that you're, you know, you're boosting with energy and you absolutely feel fantastic and you're in the job that you love and everything is going your way and the goals that you set out that you, that all that time ago, a year ago, when you were listening to that webinar have now come true. And I bet you there's a lot of people smiling because that's an amazing feeling, okay? Now, Ooh, so that feeling was fairly fantastic. So what if you don't achieve that? What if you don't take what if you don't take action and change? What will your life be like? Okay, so that's a fairly flat feeling. So I hope you've all got your eyes closed and going right. Okay, wow. You know, I was up here. I was feeling fabulous. I achieved my goals, <laughs> and in two seconds. <laughs> I'm back flat on my face, you know, and that's what you'll be like if you don't actually take action and change. Um, you know, you'll, you'll have that dull, flat, low feeling and feeling disappointment, to be honest, you know. So again, it's up to you. We, we've written down some of your goals. It's up to you to decide whether you actually want to do these. So you have two choices. You can either be the old you who says yes this all sounds great but really life is just too busy this might work for someone with more time maybe next year so I think we've all said that oh yeah next week I'm going to start or next month so you could be that old you so in a year's time from now you're still saying the same stuff or you could be the new you who decided she had enough she decided she wanted to take action now uh, she knew she had no other choice she knew what she wanted and she knew she got some help that she would change so it's a matter it's it's like a switch it's like a light bulb it's a matter of just making a decision what you want to do and just doing it you know as a, as the old sports brand says just do it so let's create the plan for the new you so often um like what i was talking about earlier on in your fears the cave you fear to enter holds the treasure you seek. I really love that quote because if there's something you really fear then it's actually worth doing because it must be fairly big if you fear it and could you imagine if you do it and you achieve it what a great feeling that you would that you would have. So a goal without a plan is just a wish and this is so true so we've talked about our goals we've talked about how static we're going to feel and if we don't actually put action to them, then they will always just remain a wish. So, here is my 10-step plan to the new you. So, you need to visualize what you really want. You want to assess every area of your life, your work, your physical being, your mental health, your goal setting. Uh, sorry, you need to then focus on your goal setting to break down your goals into actions. You want to do some self-assessment on yourself. You want to strengthen your character so that 
you can be stronger in the journey. And this isn't for everyone, by the way, because it's your journey. You need to be really strong and and make sure that you can actually get to the end of that journey. And sometimes that needs accountability. Sometimes that needs support. Sometimes that needs hand-holding by somebody that can guide you through your journey. So you need to get accountable. And progress loves action. So you need to have all your visualization done, have all your assessment done. You then need to get accountable, have your actions listed, and just do them. You then need to check in with yourself on a daily basis because if you don't have that vision board done, if you don't have your weekly, your monthly goals, and if you don't check in with yourself every week, then those goals are going to slip by and you know it and I know it. It has happened to all of us and they just don't happen. So there is a great saying, um, uh, that which is not measured is not valued. So if you do not measure your progress or if you don't, do not measure your goals, then you don't really have any value on it. Whereas if you really want to achieve something, you will measure your progress, you will track it every week, and you will be focused on achieving your goal. So those are some of the steps. What is also really necessary is you need to sit down and figure out what is holding you back and what is causing you to repeat failure. We talked about this already. Sometimes it can be the fear of actually doing something. It can be uh, something from way back in your past. My advice to you there is that if you have a goal, alongside it in a column, write down the fears that are holding you back from that goal. And then just try and write down some words alongside that why you think you have that fear. And the last step, of course, is stop thinking about it and just do it. And just, you know, it's all well and good of creating these plans, but if you're not going to take any action, you might as well just put the plans in the bin. So I love it when a plan comes together. It's about, you know, creating the person that you want to be. And just to remember that, you know, you have to learn to love yourself and to be kind to yourself. And that every single one of us on this call, you, me, and everybody else around the world that is listening right now, we are all a work in progress. And we have to fully accept who we are right now. And even, you know, if there's a part of your body that you don't like right now, put your hands on it and say, you know, I love you. <laughs> that may sound a bit stupid, but it's about accepting who we are and once we accept who we are, we can move on to who we really want to be. And uh, another task that I would get you to do is at night time when you go to bed to maybe do a small little bit of meditation and to take three deep breaths and to just close your eyes and just ask your body, how are you doing? And this may sound daft, but don't, don't tell me it's daft until you do it. So do it tonight and say, how are you doing? And you'll be really, really surprised. You'll actually get an answer back. And if you do that task every night, you will actually um, you will actually begin to listen to your body. And when you begin to listen to your body, you begin to change. So, like I said, she who risks nothing gets nothing. So if you shoot for the moon, even if you miss, you'll land among the stars. So when you start to achieve your goals, um, it is just a matter of just doing it and aiming for the stars. So what do I do? I change lives. Um, there are a couple of people here that uh, were previous clients of mine and I was delighted to work with them. If you want help implementing a solution to the new you that we've talked about tonight, then I have a gift for you. For all of you who are on the call, I have a gift. Uh, so I hope you are ready to receive it. And just to just to this is a great quote winners don't wait for chances that take them so if you do want to change your life it's up to you to take this opportunity and basically uh what i'm offering is a free consultation with myself so if you want to basically go over uh, where you are in your life and where you want to be and if you want me to go through that with you i will do a free consultation with you i also offer um online programs I take clients for three, six, nine, and 12 months, and I do everything online. Um, 
and basically I work with them with an online system. They can track everything online and they can uh, achieve their goals and basically I become their best buddy and I am on their back every week. I am the accountability partner that they need to get to where they want to be. So if um, so if you're interested in the free gift, uh, just you'll see the link there. It's um, bit.ly, it's bit.ly, slash free gift for me. So you can log on there. There's a little application form that you just have to fill out, and I will contact you to arrange an appointment. If you want any of the material from tonight, any of the, the details of any of the the different templates that I mentioned tonight, just email me at martha at marthafraser.com. So I hope you enjoyed tonight's webinar and I I hope you got something out of it. Um, I'll probably be holding uh, some more webinars uh, in the next month or so, so stay posted. I'll be sending out emails to you. And I just want to recap on tonight. So tonight we went through your goals and what you want and and it's really, really important. What I'd really love you to keep in mind is how you felt when we visualized when you achieved those goals and how you felt when you visualized if you didn't achieve those goals. And just keep that in mind. And in your daily life, just, just basically use your vision board, use your action plan, and use everything that, use everything that we talked about tonight to get to be the person that you want to be. If you want help with that, as I said, you can avail of the free gift from me. And if you'd like to contact me with regard to anything, you can contact me at martha at marthafraser.com. So that's it. I hope you enjoy the webinar, and I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks very much. If you have any questions, by the way, you can just pop them in the question bar, or you can email me. So I, I'm just going to have a quick look at the questions here. Okay, so all is good. Um, okay, so there's a couple of questions there, and people want me to get back to them directly, so that's great. So I look forward to hearing from you again. Also, if you want to stay on track with me, you can find me at facebook.com forward slash embrace health. So look forward to seeing you there, and thanks very much for joining me.